the bell icon to turn on notifications. Summary tasks help us organize our project and they also give our project structure. Summary tasks can represent different phases of a project or even different groups of tasks. And by design, when we create a summary task, we can have subtasks of that overall summary task. So let's start out in this example by inserting some new summary tasks for existing tasks in our project. So I've added a few more tasks in here. I've set the duration, start and finish times, and if they have predecessors. You'll also see that we have a bit of a mixture of automatically scheduled and manually scheduled tasks. So if I take a look at the different tasks that I have in this project, I might want to divide these up into more manageable sections. As I said, creating summary tasks allows us to focus on just what we're interested in at any given time, and it also makes our project easier to read, easier to understand, and it gives it structure. So we're going to split this project up into a few different sections. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to select all of the tasks that belong to the first section. And our first section is going to be called preparation phase. So let's hover our mouse over where we have task one until we can see that little black arrow. I'm going to click and then I'm going to drag down to select all of the tasks that belong to this first phase. So that is basically going to be tasks one to seven. Let's go up to the task tab and then in the insert group, we have a summary option. And this is going to allow us to insert a summary task. Now check out what's happened to our table just here. We now have new summary task at the top and the other tasks are now effectively subtasks of this summary task. So let's give our summary task a name. We can click in the field and this is going to be called preparation phase. You don't have to put it in caps. That's just how I've chosen to lay these summary tasks out. Now notice that as soon as I do that, I get this little black triangle next to the summary task. So this is a collapsible and expandable group now. I can click on the little arrow and it's going to collapse up all of the subtasks, click again, and it's going to expand them all out. Also notice with this summary task, if we check out the timeline, summary tasks are represented by a black bar. Now the duration of the summary task is very much defined by the durations of the subtasks below it. So the summary task is basically going to show us the duration when we add up all of these subtasks below. And the start and finish dates for the summary task again is going to be determined by the subtasks below. So the start date that you see up here for this summary task is going to be the start date of the earliest task in this group. And the finish date is going to be the finish date of the latest task in this group. So we don't really have to go in and edit anything for summary tasks because it's all determined by the subtasks below. And the reason why these summary tasks are quite nice is because at a glance, you can see exactly how long this preparation phase is going to take. I can see it's going to take 18 days. I can see we're starting on March the 1st and the preparation phase is going to come to an end on March the 27th. So it gives you a really nice high level overview. Let's add in some more summary tasks. So this time I'm going to select tasks nine to task 17. Let's click on summary once again. This is going to be the recording phase. And this time you can see the duration for this entire phase is 69 days and we can see the start and end dates. And check out how that reflects in the timeline. Let's select tasks 19 to 24. Click on summary. This is the documentation phase. And then finally, we have the go live phase. So all of the subtasks are indented under their relevant summary tasks. And we can collapse up any that we're not interested in, which helps us remove the noise and really just focus in on the tasks that are of interest to us. Now notice that when we've added in these summary tasks, by default, they are automatically scheduled summary tasks but we can also have manually scheduled summary tasks as well. And manually scheduled summary tasks are sometimes quite good for showing us if we have enough time to get subtasks done. So I'm gonna add in another summary task, and this is really just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna delete it straight away afterwards. 
But let's say I want to insert another summary task just here. So I'm going to highlight task 15. Let's go up to summary and I'm just going to add in here editing phase. And I'm going to switch this to a manually scheduled summary task. Now, currently the editing phase summary task only has one subtask, which is make video amendments. And the make video amendments task ends on June the 29th. So the summary task above reflects that as well. Now check out what happens if I go into this summary task and modify the duration. I'm going to take this down to two days. Now notice what happens here. I've got a red squiggly line underneath the finish. And if we check out the timeline, notice that it's showing in red. And that's basically telling me that the summary task is set to end before its subtask, in this case, completes. And this is probably something that I'm going to need to look at. Now, this doesn't generally tend to happen with automatically scheduled tasks, but sometimes when you're working with manually scheduled summary tasks, this problem might pop up. So it's good to know what it means and how to fix it. So now I can see that this is in red. I can say, OK, I've set two days for the editing phase, but we only have one subtask here and that is four days long. So it's going to finish after the end of the summary task. Now I'm just going to take this back up to four, which is an easy fix. As soon as I do that, you can see that it changes back to how it was previously a teal bar with the summary task showing just above. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.